Hello and welcome to CPH Session 19, Inferential Statistics, Making Comparisons and Conclusions from Data. This is Part C, Sampling Variability and Margins of Error. In this section, we'll talk about how to compute and interpret confidence intervals. But this time, we'll be talking about binary outcomes. And then I'll show you what to do when your sample size is small. So hopefully, you can recall that when we talk about categorical data, our summary statistic of choice is the proportion. The data is not continuous, so we cannot compute a sample mean. Situations in which we might be looking at a proportion might include the proportion of individuals that are covered by the universal coverage scheme, uh, the proportion of community members that are infected with dengue fever in the past year, or the proportion of community members currently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and so on. And hopefully you also recall that for each individual in our sample, we record a bi binary outcome rather than a continuous measurement. And from that, we compute our sample proportion, or p hat. Now, as I'm sure you know, 70% of Thailand's 67 million people are covered by UCS. We can consider those 67 million Thais our population, and that 70% would be the true population proportion of people covered by UCS. Imagine, though, I start taking samples of 100 people each and asking them if they're covered by UCS. I'm sure you can imagine that in one sample I might find 80% are covered by UCS. And if I take another, I might by chance come across more people not covered by UCS, so I find 67, 65%. And if I did again, found another 100 people, I might find that the sample proportion is 70% covered by UCS. And if I did that, let's say, 20 times and made a histogram of my sample proportions, I might see this. In fact, if I kept going to 50 total samples of 100 people, I might see this. And it's incredible. Even though I'm using proportions, it looks like my sampling distribution is normally distributed. It turns out binary outcomes are just like continuous outcomes in some ways. Binary outcomes have sampling variability. And it turns out that the sampling distribution of sample proportions is normally distributed. So, in fact, we can apply the central limit theorem to binary outcomes as well. That means that the sampling distribution of sample proportions is normally distributed. Secondly, the mean of all our sample proportions is equal to the population proportion. And finally, the standard deviation of the sample proportions, or standard error, is equal to this square root. So, taking this information, we can again compute a 95% confidence interval, just like we did with continuous data. This time, we'll start with the sample proportion and add and subtract about two standard errors. With binary outcomes, this range is sometimes referred to as the margin of error. We start with our best estimate of the proportion, population's proportion, which would be our sample proportion, or p-hat, and we recognize the uncertainty that arises from sampling variability. And if we took 100 samples of this size, we would expect that in 95 of those 100 samples, the true population proportion would lie within this range. And if you want other margins of error for different confidence intervals, you may adjust that multiplier. So for example, for a 99% confidence interval, we would multiply the standard error by 2.6. So let's look at an example for the 95% confidence interval from the Virginia Republican primary. Let's say we wanted to answer the question, what proportion of our 2016 Virginia Republican primary voters had a high school diploma or less? In our cross-sectional sample, we sampled 1,523 people from the population. And of our 
participants, uh, 183 of them responded that they have a high school education or less. So what is the margin of error or the confidence interval for this metric? Well, first we need to compute p hat. So 183 divided by 1,523 gives us a p hat of 12%. Next, uh, we compute two times the standard error. So when we insert that 0.12 for p hat uh, into our formula and uh, 1,523 for n, we find that two times the standard error is 1.7%. And so we add and subtract two times that standard error for the sample proportion, and we get a range. And so when we do that, we expect that the true population proportion is likely to be between 10.3% and 13.7%. And we can even take those results and put it into a chart. And so we can add error bars in Excel. And, and that's how we can visually illustrate our uncertainty that results from sampling variability in proportions. And then let's look at what we need to do when n is small. So with binary data, we can define small in this way. n is small if either n times p hat is less than 10 or if n times 1 minus p hat is less than 10. If either one of those are true, then n is considered small, and we cannot use our formula out of the box. It's just like when our sample size was small for continuous data. And I'll show you an example of why. Imagine a situation in which we give a drug to 16 randomly selected patients that belong to a particular population. Uh, then we measure the efficacy of that drug in those 16 people. And we find in our results that after one month, the drug was not efficacious for two of the 16 people. And so what would be the confidence interval in that case? Well, let's follow our plan. First, we find p hat. Uh, it turns out it's 12.5%. Next, we get the standard error, which we find to be 8.3% using our formula. And so 95% confidence interval would be p hat uh, plus or minus two times the standard error. And when we do that, we find that it should be from negative 5% to 28%. What? Negative 5%? That is not possible. So actually, it turns out we need a computer. The central limit theorem breaks down with small sample sizes. In fact, what we need to do is use something called exact binomial calculations. And if we do that, we would find that really the 95% confidence interval goes from 2 to 38%. In other words, we believe that the 95% confidence interval for the proportion of our population in which our drug is not efficacious after one month, we believe that would be 2 to 38%. So let me sum that up for you. You can find a sample proportions confidence interval two ways. First, you can use the central limit theorem formula. As long as n is large, defined in the way that we said, this will work out fine. The second way that we can do it is to compute it using exact binomial results. This approach requires a computer. In other words, you can't do it by hand, but it is applicable anytime and you must use it if n is small. It's not so easy in Excel, so I recommend this website that is shown here. What you do is you, you type in the sample size, uh, you type in the number of responses in your question and the confidence interval you want, and it'll give you the results. Of course, you could also use a, any stats program like Stata or something like that. So, at this point, you should be able to answer question three on your inferential statistics practice worksheet. Uh, in the next parts of section 19, we'll talk about hypothesis testing.